know the drill. Once we get thumbs up from the photographers, we'll do a sound check. Everyone say their name and spell it, what department you're from, and then we'll just berate you Not with questions. Not a problem. Right. Not a problem. Sounds I'm good. Get you where you want, man. Yeah. Looking for a and then just for framing purposes for the yes. cameras, when you answer, can you always look at her? Right there. You're front and center. You're front and center. That's it. Thank you for doing that. I've looked at the wrong camera so many times. Yeah, just for framing, it seems like that'll be the best. Yeah. Okay. Let me make sure I'm all muted up here, and we'll go from there and see if my chief got back to me with some of the stuff that I was hoping for. And he did not yet. Still working on it. All right. Well, we'll go with what we got. Everyone's set? <coughs> we'll start with those sound checks. Excellent. Thank you very much uh, for everybody coming out. And um, so, uh, Lieutenant Robert Arguez with Bernalillo County Fire Department's Public Information Office. Uh, for sound check purposes, obviously, we'll just roll through that. And my first name is Robert, R O B E R T. My last name is Arguez, spelled A R G U E L L E S. And I'm Lieutenant Jason Fair, Albuquerque Fire Rescue PIO, J A S O N F E J E R. I'm Lieutenant here at Albuquerque Fire. So I guess we just want to start with um, what you guys responded to initially, and can you tell us what it's turned into? Not a problem. So at approximately 2.38 today, uh, we received a call for an outside fire of plastics burning next to a commercial structure. Um, uh, upon arrival, obviously the fire had uh, spread significantly through the types of plastics materials that were here. Uh, and quickly turned from uh, uh, a small outside fire with plastics to a uh, very large outside fire involving uh, some high density, high density polyethylene plastics um, at this facility. Do you happen to know what time you guys responded uh, and how long has it been going on? So the, we got the initial call at approximately 2.38 this afternoon. Uh, first units arrived, I'd say probably about uh, five to eight minutes after that. Um, I can get you the exact numbers on all the arrival times of some of those units just after this. Uh, but suffice it to say, our units were here very quickly. Uh, initial dispatch came in with um, County uh, Fire Station 8, pr pretty much the, the ladder and the rescue out of that station, as well as our Battalion 8 Commander, and uh, Engine 2 and Rescue 2 uh, from Albuquerque Fire and Rescue. And so as, a, as LT mentioned, uh, the, the more calls we started getting, the more resource we started adding to this event. So like you said, this is a multi-alarm, multi-jurisdictional fire that escalated from an outside fire to a multi-alarm structure fire that then has since turned into a multi-alarm wildland fire as well. Uh, you see as the, the winds that we have, which are, have actually been fortunate for us today in fighting this type of fire, that the wind is kind of pushing away from the city of Albuquerque and mostly putting out onto the unpopulated areas of Kirtland Air Force Base. Uh, that being said, if the winds do shift, uh, we might have to get out of here in a hurry. So uh, if we give you guys a word, we'll load up in the cars and we'll, we'll get you guys back out of here. But uh, the winds did work in our favor. Uh, they did kind of push the fire away from the building that's behind us. If the winds would have come out the other way that that structure would have been much more heavily involved it kind of did there was some impingement into that structure but the the fire since pushed away from that uh, now they're also focusing on the wildland aspect of this with the winds that we have so that's also turned into a multi-alarm wildland fire uh, we now have uh, Bernalillo County of course Albuquerque Fire Corrales is now responding with some units and we also have Kirtland Air Force Base we might uh, get some crash trucks from out Air, uh, Kirtland Air Force Base and that's what's going to help uh, start to actually extinguish uh, the these fires that are involving these plastics, which can be very difficult to extinguish. Yes. I think a big question is, you know, the smoke right now and the chemicals, you know, is that safe that we're breathing that in right now? What do you tell folks out there? So the LT and I talked about this earlier. Uh, it said we are lucky with the way that the winds are pushing right now. There's that kind of really far south area of Albuquerque that might be involved with four hills, areas of South Wantabo Hills, uh, Mirabella, some of those neighborhoods up, up into the canyon into uh, Carnwell. But, um, if, if you have a swamp cooler, I, I hate to tell anybody to turn it off with, with this kind of weather, but uh, you definitely don't want to be uh, uh, sucking this smoke that's involving these kind of plastics into your home. So keep your windows shut, uh, keep your swamp coolers off if, if you can tolerate it. And uh, we have no uh, 
immediate evacuation zones or anything that we're trying to implement now, just telling people to stay inside, tr uh, turn off the swamp coolers if they can, and keep their windows closed. And again, I want to reinforce what Lieutenant Fayer just indicated earlier. You know, yeah. we are very fortunate that the wind is driving this into an area that is pretty much unpopulated areas of the base right now. And the base is fully aware of that. As they see fit for their facilities, they'll remove people, um, you know, or have them shelter in place as needed for their facilities. But for the most part, with the direction that this is moving, it's moving into unpopulated areas, that, or the heavy smoke is moving into populated areas and that's to our benefit on this now if again as lieutenant indicated if that does change direction if we do see uh, you know people in those southern eastern most portions of the city uh, or county area that are that are experiencing maybe some of that smoke uh, smell and maybe some of that black uh, smoke coming into their area then you know obviously they're advised to either shelter in place and turn off their air conditioner units or maybe consider just kind of leaving that area for a little while while the smoke kind of dissipates and works its way out of the area what type of approach do you guys take when you are dealing with this type of a fire? So in, in this kind of case, you know, we, basically this has become a, a very uh, organic and evolutionary type of fire. You know, initially coming in as a small fire, we got resources on site and realized this was going to grow very quickly. The types of um, hydrocarbons and, and plastics that are burning behind us, the wind-driven fire that pushed them, cause them to spread into uh, everything from their new uh, materials that were getting ready to go out to customers to some of their small fibrous already broken down recycled materials that are on site that they use to make new pipes. So the, the fact of the matter is, is this was a fire that was destined to, to just kind of grow very rapidly and the types of heat and, and, and the types of smoke and flames that this puts out, yeah, there, it's very difficult for you to kind of get ahead of it right away when it's outside and wind driven like this. If it's inside a structure where there's a, maybe like a suppression system involved, hopefully you could kind of get a hit on that fire right away from the suppression system and knock it down and then we could get units in there. But with this kind of system, that, or with this kind of way that this is happening out here, this fire is just gonna grow really rapidly. So our best bet for this is we're gonna surround the areas and protect as much of the exposures as we can. That being, you know, the, the buildings and facilities just to the north of this, the uh, the wildland areas that are out there. And we're gonna do our best to try to slowly work and douse this plastic. But the types of plastic this is burns very hot, uh, very quickly. And, it, and it's, it's something that water just doesn't quickly and easily put out. That's why we have additionally uh, asked for those resources from the uh, Kirtland Air Force Base to come out and give us a hand with maybe laying down some some pretty heavy foam onto this. And we also have, you know, assistance from even local contractors. Guzman sent out uh, one of their big water trucks that was in the area to try to help supply water for this. So we, it, it is definitely an all all out effort from a lot of different uh, entities. And as the LT mentioned, uh, these are very, very difficult fires to put out. And even with the amounts of water that we can put on these fires, uh, we're not making a lot of headway. So as he mentioned, the, the primary focus was making sure that building was evacuated so that nobody was injured. Uh, and there has been no reports of injuries at this point. So that's something to highlight here. And then also trying to keep people out of the line. We're lucky with the way that it's pushing that there's not a lot of buildings out there. There is one structure that's farther east that could be threatened, uh, also not, not populated right now. So uh, we are very fortunate the way that the winds did push us. If they would have been coming from the other way, uh, we would have had a probably much different response. There might have been some evacuations involved. So, uh, so far we're lucky. Uh, we're going to be on this fire for potentially days. Yep. yep. It's, it's going to take a lot of water and a lot of time to put this out. Uh, they have lost a lot of product here. Uh, we tried to protect what we could and we just kind of keep moving. And, and keep redrawing that line as we can and keep redeploying resources to try to protect as much as we can. What do you have to say to the crowds of Lucky that have been just kind of flocking out here all day to get a look at the fire? I, you know, I would say we, we definitely understand that there is interest in these kind of emergency situations. And we want to let people know we're here to serve the community. So we never balk at the opportunity for the community to come out and see what we do in action. We just ask that our community understand that in the process of these emergency operations, to do their due diligence, be respectful of the authorities that are, are working throughout the area with the potential for wind shift or, or change in conditions in these fires sometimes they'll end up pushing people back a little bit further than maybe they would like to be we do this as a safety measure for them and and we also need to have an understanding that with this type of operations we are going to be expecting resources to be moving in and out of the area so we also need to make sure we have good clear lines of ingress and egress for those resources as they come into and out of the scene and so we just ask people to be diligent be respectful and be understanding of the fact that we got a job to do and we're doing our very best to make sure that we that we do that and to just kind of cooperate with us in that uh, but definitely you know if they want to stay back at a little bit of a distance and capture what we're doing and capture this fire absolutely just just kind of be mindful of what we're doing and, and help us do our very best and like lieutenant said uh, 
the getting us uh, our equipment in here is the most important thing. So with only one way in here and one way out, th that access is kind of limited. So we just ask the, the uh, people that are coming out to take a look, to be mindful of it, pull to the right, make sure that they're letting these emergency crews in. Do we know how many acres have been burned so far? Uh, the, the last report I got from uh, the wildland uh, chief that had taken over was there was two acres burning and that was probably 45 minutes ago with these winds it's probably increased even more than that but it, it's two plus acres of wildland involvement and just so uh, we can confirm here was that building lost was there a building lost here the so uh, that that big building behind us wasn't lost uh, it was definitely threatened uh, there there is fire impingement on it. you can see uh, that southern wall kind of melted and, and twisted up uh, we did have a crew inside that went in from the other side of the the, the east side of the building and stretched the line interior to kind of protect that that exposure and and to try to stop the fire right there so we're lucky that the winds weren't coming out of a different direction and mm -hmm. you can see as since that fire has pushed away from the building. For this type of a fire, and I know you guys mentioned that the wind is pushing this way, which is good because it's not threatening these types of structures. Yes, but sir. if you guys are saying that this uh, fire is going to be taking days and the wind pander may change, at some point does that mean that these people may have to leave and be evacuated? So as the primary, as the primary um, fuel load of this fire, so the, the massive amount of plastics that are still continuing to burn behind us, as those continue to burn and that massive portion of it burns, the thing is that they'll have smaller groupings of that throughout the next you know, 24 to 48 hour period that, that will then still be ignited. And basically what ends up happening, having to happen is we end up having to get uh, construction materials or, or you know, a, a bigger heavy equipment to come out and start to scrape through that plastic and allow us to get from the, the stuff on top that may be ash or may have been somewhat extinguished and make sure that the stuff underneath is actually fully extinguished. So that's what ends up making these types of, of, of fires end up being long duration fires, right? The, uh, with that, you know, sometimes you'll still see some, some wispy smoke, maybe even some small portions of flames, but the, the, the biggest, largest amount of flame and fuel load and smoke that you're going to see is going to be at this initial portion of the incident. Once it transitions into where it's kind of like on the downswing of it, that it'll still be burning, but it'll be burning at a much lower level. Uh, and thus that, that kind of minimizes the, the possibility of, of, you know, hope of spread into another. Could we still see some of that smoke lay over and go in a different direction? Absolutely, but hopefully the, uh, the opportunity for fire to spread will be much more minimalized at that point. Do we know what exactly started the fire on the plastic? I, I don't have any reports of what started. They're, All of that is still be, under investigation. Yeah, they're they're going to be looking okay. at that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And, and I know that, you know, again, we, we, this is a unified command. Uh, both of our departments working diligently to do our best for the public. We do this all the time. We work really well together. And I have no doubt that that will also continue on as far as the investigation portion goes uh, with our departments, uh, both working together to, to, to find out, you know, kind of exactly where this, what happened and, and what could be uh, beneficial in preventing this kind of thing in the future. I don't, I don't think I have any other questions. Um, roughly how tall are the flames right now? Well, you can see some of the flame activity that going up through that uh, through that smoke plume. And the thing about smoke is it's just unburned fuels. So there's been flames probably close to 100 feet in the air at times, not from the actual product that's burning, but from all the particulates that are up in the smoke that actually catches fire because it's so hot. We actually had to move equipment early on because we had uh, equipment parked actually too close to that fire. And as it grew, we had to start moving some of that equipment back because there was definitely some of the, the biggest exposures we had were our own equipment. Yep. So and and I'm gonna and I'm gonna like I'm I'm gonna reinforce exactly what the lieutenant was saying there. It, it wasn't that those were initially parked there, uh, you know, uh, understanding that they were gonna be pretty close. They were parked quite a ways off. As this fire grew in intensity and size, it pushed right into those, and that that you know ends up becoming a delay in our operations and the ability to fight the fire effectively. We have to move those those resources back a little bit further and relocate to the best position, and that also provides difficulty in us being able to get a as quick a fight on this as we'd like to see. So would we say it's over 50 feet, under, under 50 feet? Well over 100 foot flame lengths well, at, at, as, at, as varies. Right okay. Yeah, well over 100 foot flame lengths as varies. Okay. Not, not uniformly throughout, but again, you know, as the Lieutenant was saying, that flame, if you can see it right here, it's still going up inside that cloud a little, quite a bit further. So uh, well over 100 foot in, 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 uh, in the plume. Is there anything else that you guys uh, are able to tell us that we may not have asked that people should know or be aware of? Um, yeah, absolutely. Once uh, once we got here, one of the uh, responsible parties 
for the business was on site. Uh, they had indicated to us right away as soon as they saw that the, that the flames were there and that they had a fire going, they evacuated their facilities right away. So they were very diligent in making sure that their people got out and did the best they could to, to get them out of there and get evacuated from that area right away and made sure they called us right away. And that gave us the best opportunity to get here and get started on this early and probably would what helped benefit in us being able to save as much of that building, uh, working together to save as much of that building as we could. So that was huge. I want to give kudos to, uh, to the RP and their people for making sure that they got their people out and safe right away and then got us uh, working here quickly to start doing our best. And I think the other thing just to highlight is if, if something changes or there is a, a, a shift in wind or fire behavior, we'll get any notifications out to the public that we need to in case uh, we do actually need to implement so, so, some sort of evacuation or kind of change uh, how we're uh, getting some of the word out into the public. So, yep. Thanks, guys. Absolutely. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you guys.